Welcome to the world's most fabulous people series. I'm your host today, Tanya Hoffman, with the Public Speakers Association. And I am so excited to introduce you our first fabulous guest star. Oh, the amazing Rex Sykes. Hey, Rex. Hey, Tanya. How are you? And how is everybody out there in Public Speaker Association and fabulous TV land? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so tell us, Rex, how, I mean, it must be amazing to be this fabulous. So tell us a little bit about you. Oh, it is so amazing being me. I am so fabulous. It is just uh, beyond belief. And you know what? It is true. I am fabulous. And I don't mean that, that I'm fabulous to you, but to me, I'm fabulous. In other words, I love myself and I love my life and I'm blessed in every way that I can imagine. And that makes me fabulous. And that makes living each and every moment fabulous, even when it doesn't appear that way. So I'm fabulous. Um, I'm also uh, a, a number of different things. I, I've been a, a, a thought leader and a personal transformation uh, provider for over 40 years. I started in the field of acting. I'm an actor, director, and producer. I've done some writing. And uh, I've produced you know, different movies and pilots and TV shows and things like that. Uh, but I'm also... Uh, a master hypnotist and hypnotherapist. I'm a master trainer of something called neuro linguistic programming and design human engineering. I'm a certified and licensed bank code trainer, which is a phenomenally new uh, system for uh, unlocking other people's uh, reasons for doing things. And uh, among other things, I, I'm, my background's in accelerated and whole brain learning. And for 40 years, I provided people seminars and workshops and programs and products to help transform their lives, both in person, online, and uh, in, in home study. So um, that's how I'm fabulous. I have both the corporate side and the personal side, the public side. And I write a daily blog, which is called Daily Inspiration and Gratitude, which is all about how you and the listeners and the viewers and the readers can be fabulous as well. Awesome. So have you always been this fabulous? <laughs> yes, I have, but I didn't always know it. You know, I mean, and I think that's true for most of us. You know, I struggled through my life. I was brought up in a middle-class home. Uh, they were well off. My family, my parents were doctors, but, but they always worried about money and they always struggled and they had their fights. And as a child, I thought, you know, I am the cause of their pain and their suffering. I have a sister, you know, but I, I took all of the burden of my parents' issues on me. I adopted their thinking and their philosophies that life was hard. You had to struggle to get ahead. You had to save that that you better not count on things because they probably don't work out. And so by the time I was 25, I was pretty much a mess. I mean, I, 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 I could function. And, uh, but I went skydiving, I got injured, and I went to a doctor for some pain relief and some, some sleep, and he gave me a, a, what turned out to be a combination of what would be fatal uh, a combination of pills. And uh, it unfortunately didn't kill me. They, they, after the fact, they considered me a medical miracle to be alive and walking and, uh, and functioning and not in, you know, in a vegetative state. So, uh, but I lost uh, a huge chunk of time with amnesia, uh, uh, the recovery back. I went into other drugs and alcohol because I felt shame and guilty and horrible and, and really, really uh, not comfortable with myself. And guess what? That was the transforming point in my life because um, the bad thing happened. It, it made me just stop and go, I can't continue to live this way. I'd lost friends. I'd lost the fiance. I'd lost my career, you know, and I was really struggling. I nearly drove off a cliff and was stuck in the mountains. I mean, I, I just, everything was going into the gutter. And, um, and I stopped and I said, I, I'm going to sit in my room. I'm going to sit in an easy chair and I'm not going to leave until I could come out and face the world more confidently and it took me six weeks but the good news is what i learned in that six weeks that allowed me to come out you don't have to spend six weeks in an easy all on your own easily and, and effortlessly and, and 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 condition yourself for success so so yes i am fabulous today i was fabulous then and i was fabulous enough to notice that crap happens and that's okay because so many of us look back at the worst times in our life and can connect the dots and go, you know, if it hadn't been for that horrible thing, I wouldn't be the person I am today. And so that horrible thing is, is part of the transformation process. I love that. So can you share a few fabulous tips and that we could like, Ooh, kind of chew on and, and absorb. Well, absolutely. And, and, um, 
you know, I have in, in my workshops and seminaries, in my writings, I oftentimes I ask people, I go, what stops most people from living the life of their dreams, from going after the people and the things and, 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 and the self transformation that they want to have? What is it that stops them? And you come up with all sorts of answers, you know, fear, worry, anxiety, depression, you know, never had a chance, didn't have the education, my parents didn't do it, don't have enough money, blah, 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 blah. But what really is stopping them is a thought, a mental packet of energy that doesn't really exist in reality. It is energy. It's electrochemical in, in nature. It's in our, it, it does stuff inside of us, but it's a thought that stops people. Most people are stopped by a thought, by what they think. I mean, Imagine that. You know, it's not a, a lion, it's not a tiger, it's not a bear, it's not a tank, it's not a foreign army, it's not big bullies in your backyard, it's not people tying you to a chair and holding you back and telling you you can't do it. It's what we think about what it is that we have routinely and habitually think that has prevented us from going for what it is that we want. So, wow. our thought stops us. And in order to get going and to move forward, we need to be able to change our thoughts. Now, we met in another show about abundance and questions. And, and one of the things that I discovered was how to make affirmations work and how to make your visualization work and how to, how to get your thinking to work for you by asking uh, questions. And we didn't go into everything, and there's a whole lot more, but you can use questions to direct your brain in a useful way. Because when you do, you think in different ways. If you say, I suck, and you go, how come I suck? Why do I suck? How come I'm so bad? You know, you will, you will spiral down a rabbit hole. If you say, I suck, but I'm learning to get better. How soon can I discover myself getting better? What do I need to do in order to make changes? How quickly can I find myself feeling good? Um, even though I might suck, there are lots of good things about me. What are they? I mean, you start to change where you put your focus and where you put your attention. So the thought that stops you, if you stop and take a breath and, and chill out and relax, release, let go, and forgive yourself for it, because there's nothing wrong with what you're thinking. Guess what? What you and I think that routinely stops us is conditioning that we adopted, albeit unconsciously, from the people around us, our parents, uh, other siblings, peers, teachers, uh, the media. I mean, the news is always bad news, and the economy's always sucking, and there's always something wrong. So we've adopted a lot of thinking that has become the basis of our beliefs and our limitations, and those are habitual. And as I look at it, you have two kinds of habits, habits that support you or habits that don't support you, habits that are positive and move you forward or habits that are negative and move you away from what it is you want. So you want to eliminate the negative thinking, shift to the positive thinking, and create new beliefs that empower you and allow you to move forward. And that's a process of conditioning. You and I don't go into a gym, pick up a dumbbell, lift it, make one curl, put it down and come back a year later and expect our bicep to grow. We know that we have to condition ourselves daily. We have to eat three times a day. We have to get enough sleep. Um, most of us shower. Oh, by the way, my hair, since it looks all messy, I got to tell you about that and I'm going to interrupt and divert. Um, I, for 17 years, have shaved my head, and, I, and I'm also an actor, and I got a movie role, and so they asked me to grow my hair, and it's just in that wild, crazy phase where you can't do anything with it, so I don't do anything with it. I let it be, and, and people are distracted and think I'm a crazed guy, and somebody said, Rex, you are the Jerry Garcia of personal transformation, and I like it, so I'm going to wear it that way, you nice. know, so <laughs> anyway, um, but, but, it, but you condition your hair. You wash your hair. You condition your hair. You shower. There are things that you do as daily rituals. And what most people don't do is they don't take the time, and it does require time. They don't take the time, but it takes minutes and seconds and minutes to condition their mind, to feed their mind with positive thoughts and things that make them feel good. Because here is the sequence. You think a negative thought, guess what? You call it the law of attraction. I hate that name, but I call it the law of attraction. That attracts another negative thought. What you think leads to the next thought. So if you think one negative thought, you're going to think another negative thought. You think, I, I feel bad. What's wrong? That sucks. Then something else is wrong. And that's why it spirals or goes down the rabbit hole. And not only that, when you think that negative thought, that electrochemical thing, translates into a feeling. So you think a negative thought and you feel bad. Guess what? The next thought you think makes you feel worse. You get a negative thought, negative feeling, negative feeling, negative thought. It is a, it's a two-step loop. 
And the only way to get out of it, and then that leads to your actions, whether you feel motivated or not motivated, whether you take action, whether you don't take action, whether you think you can or think you can't, as Henry Ford said, you are right. So uh, the thought leads to the feeling, the feeling leads to the action, whether you take it or not, and the action leads to the results you've got. So if you're getting crappy results, you know what most people do? They try and work on the results. They try and fix the problem over here instead of fixing what caused the problem, and that's the thinking in the first place. That's why Einstein said that the solution to the problem doesn't exist at the level of the problem. It exists way back in the beginning where the thinking comes from. So we change our thoughts to get better results. And you can get marvelous, incredible, wonderful, fabulous results when you turn around your thinking. Because then when you may think positive and powerful and wonderful thoughts and ask yourself positive and powerful and wonderful questions, you begin to feel good. And when you feel good, you think clear, you act clear, you take more action, you feel more motivated, you feel more inspired. And so you get more good results. Plus, you unlock and unleash your own intuitive abilities. You have gut feelings, hunches, and your own brain does this, whether it's negative or positive. Uh, this is what I will I'll stop with. But your own brain, which most people think sabotages them, which is BS. It's total BS. Your, your own brain is your best friend. It's doing what it was trained to do reliably and automatically to serve you, to keep you alive, to keep you functioning. And yet you just don't like it. So you call it sabotage. It's not sabotaging you. It's doing what it learned to do. And all you need to do is learn to train it to do what you want instead. Not rely on the conditioning you got from your parents way back when but to change it. And now you can change it. And I show you how to change it. That's what I've been doing for 40 years is I, I help people change their thinking and transform their thinking and their being so that they can be the person that they've always wanted to be that's inside them, that fabulous person that's yearning to get out so that they can feel good, take the right actions and get the results that they want so they can live the life of their dreams. But I live the life of my dreams. And it wasn't always that way. So... Uh -huh. Changing thoughts leads to better results. So have you ever had one of those crazy, like fabulously embarrassing moments or something that you had and then you learned something amazing from? <laughs> even though at the time you're like, oh my gosh. Every day and I still do. But I'm going to tell you one. Years ago, I worked with a partner. We'd go into the corporate world and I would wear long hair and a dangle earring and I would go, I'm your unruly conscious mind. You know, or I'm your unruly, unconscious mind. And he was very straight laced in the tie and the three piece suit and very prim and proper. And he'd go, I am whatever the opposite of what I said is. And I said, We're both here, you know, to, to teach you how to do things. Now, one of the things in my background is, is um, I've been, you know, consultants for trials like the OJ trial and different things like that uh, in body language and in being able to recognize cues, nonverbal cues. Um, I, I've taught DEA agents and, and uh, hostage negotiators and officers, and, so, but people from all walks of life too, CEOs, all the way to pig farmers, how to better understand what's going on in people's stuff. So, and we call it calibrating. You learn to look at things and calibrate, you know, where people are at. I'm out there and I walk out and I'm going blah, 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 blah. And I deliver my first bit. And my co-trainer comes up to me and whispers in my ear and he says, you know, these guys are really good at calibrating. And I go, really? He goes, oh, God, yeah, they're able to notice things that you wouldn't believe. And I go, really, what? They go, well, they've noticed your zipper is open. <laughs> and it was. And fortunately for them, nothing was revealed, but it was. And so here I'm standing in front of this large audience of people with my slide on talking about how great it is to be able to pay attention and notice things. <laughs> And I hadn't noticed that my own zipper was down. Well, <laughs> well, you know, what could I do? I mean, you know, I could be embarrassed. I could feel shamed. I could get it. But I just turned. I said, I zipped it up and go, I'm glad you noticed that. You know, if you were paying attention, I'm glad, you know, I mean, I, I, I made a joke of it. I made light of it. But it taught me, too, to always do a double check. Always, <laughs> you know, don't assume things. And right. that's also what we, we do. We assume things of other people. We assume things of ourselves. We assume we can't get ahead because we never have. And those are the things that need to be changed inside of us and that we can change when you know how to change them. Love it. So do you have something fabulous you'd like to share with our amazing listeners today? Something you, I think you had a free offer or something? I, I do. I have an incredible 22 minute, it's short, it's brief, but it's power packed audio MP3. And guess what the title is? It's called What's Stopping You? And it's literally two chapters 
from my new book that's coming out. And uh, it is, the book hasn't been released yet, but it's powerful. And, and I read the chapters. So, and I've had people tell me they really love listening to this and it's really helped them. You know, so a lot of people are already getting the gift, but I want you to have it too. You go to my website, Daily Inspiration and Gratitude. It's spelled just like it sounds, all one word, Daily Inspiration and Gratitude dot com forward slash free gift one word free gift daily inspiration gratitude dot com free forward slash free gift or if you just go to daily inspiration and gratitude dot com uh, above there in the pull up menu or across the title bar is a thing that says free gift and you can go there click on that and you can download your free gift and I encourage you to do it go get it it is my absolute free gift to you and it will help you to get past the limitations, the blocks, and things that hold you back to be able to convert your thinking into more powerful thinking so that you can skyrocket the kind of results that you want to get and create the life that you deserve. So that's my free gift, and I hope everyone will take advantage of it and get it now. Yes, go and grab it because I know my husband went immediately and he's listened to it and he loved it. And then, Thank of course, you. I, you know, listened to it while he was listening to it. And it's amazing. It definitely is something that everyone needs to jump on right now. So go do it. So thank you, Rex, for being on today and, and sharing so much great value. Thank you for all the kind words. And I just want to say I do clean up, too. You know, I, I can look I can look pretty dapper. But uh <laughs> but I thank you for having me on looking wild and crazy and it's been a fabulous time you have a fabulous show and I love everything you do and it's, it's an honor and a privilege to be here thanks so much absolutely all right everyone go get connected to Rex you'll enjoy being a part of this world make sure you grab his download and we will see you next time on the world's most fabulous people series bye bye everyone bye Rex bye, -bye.